So one of the biggest complaints I get in my games, well, the current ones that are out on the store, such as Compacto and Crypto Clickers, is the fact that the fonts are not monospace. If you don't know what monospace is, it's basically every character is evenly spaced between each other. So the top example here, this font is monospaced. However, this one is not. A lot of the cool looking fonts they can find out on the internet don't look very nice if they are monospace. So what if we want to take a good looking font like I have in Idle Research and we want to make it monospace? Well, that's what I'm about to show you in today's video. So this is my scene I have set up. I have two sample text and these are text mesh pro text by the ways. Do not use the legacy text and if you haven't installed it, then make sure you go to window, text mesh pro, import TMP essential resources and you're good from there. But anyways, we can turn any font into a monospace font. So let's start with this first example. So in order to apply Moto space to our font in order to evenly space everything out, we have to use this HTML tag called M space. So we just set it equal to our pixel amount, which is like the amount of pixels they're going to spread apart. If you were set to 0.1, everything's just going to be on top of each other. While if you have it set to 100 pixels or maybe even a thousand, everything is just going to be spaced apart and it looks kind of funny. So you could see it doesn't look great. However, it reduces the shaking if we were to have fast increasing numbers. And our goal would be to use this for numbers only because that's generally the number that's always going to be changing. So that's where our second example comes into play. So instead, we have our M space opening HTML tag and then our closing one around our number. So this label isn't affected and it's just a number. And this looks more natural. And if you wanted to, you could change this number to whatever may look best. I think 55 pixels will look best in this situation. Let's implement it in our script. So I have one script called a UI manager. So this is where I'm gonna update my text and I'm going to create another script called utilities. And this can just stay in your assets folder. It does not need to go onto your scene. Since this script won't be going into our scene, we can delete this mono behavior and we don't need start and update. So in our utilities class, we're going to be creating something called an extension method. So if you don't know what that is, let me briefly explain. Let's just say we have some integer variable called some int and it's equal to 40. So let's say we have a string variable called some string and we want to set our some string to whatever some int is. So we can just set it to this. When we do this, again, this is an integer, we're going to get an error saying that we cannot convert type int to a type string. So we have to use an extension method that all ints have called to string. And this basically just converts it to a string. So this is an extension method and we're going to be creating something like this. So this will be a public static string method. And it's static because we need to use this outside of this utility script in other scripts and it must be static in order to create an extension method. All right, so as of right now, it's just a normal static method. It's not going to do anything, and this will not work as an extension method, and it returns an empty string. So to make this an extension method, we have to pass in our first parameter as this string original. So when we say this, back to the original example, this refers to the variable it's being extended from. However, in order to do this we have to make this class static and let's say we want to apply this to every string or number we have but we want to make a setting for it so this can be controlled outside of this class and method but we'll just make a variable called bool enabled and by default we'll set it to true so if we want to disable this mono space we can just set the enable to false and it will just return the normal string if the enabled is false, then we're just going to return the original string. However, we want to return our M space tag equal to however many pixels you want. So in my case, it looks good with 55. So I'll use 55 and then original and closing M space. So this dollar sign allows us to 
do string interpolation where we can add variables inside of the string like we did here. So let's say we have one string called one and let's just say it's some random number 4567 and we have another string and we want to convert this into a monospace string. So it would be one dot monospace and we're all done here. So if you want to disable this, we would just type in false and it would return the original string. So we'll do testing in a bit, but let's just say we have an integer, right? So let's change this one into an int or maybe double, let's do double. We would see that we cannot resolve symbol monospace. What we can do here is accept any kind of variable that isn't just a string. So we're going to convert this into a generic method by adding the carrot and the t here, where t represents a generic. And a generic is just any type of variable we give it. So it could be a string, int, double, or any form of object. And we'll change this original string into a t, so it's just a generic. And additionally, when we're returning our original string, if this was disabled, we would have to use the toString extension method. And we can simplify things by using the ternary operator. So what we can do is that if it's enabled, we use question marks. So this is our true statement. So it's going to return this. If it's false, it's going to return the original like that. We can get rid of this if, if statement. So now it's a one liner and you can convert this to expression body if you'd like. So then it really looks like a one liner and it looks like that. So now we can accept any form of variable. So it could be a double, it could be an int, a float, heck, even a byte if we wanted to. Now we can test this inside of our actual game. This will be a very basic script. So I'm going to create two text variables for our sample text. Additionally, I'm going to create a double variable. And we're going to increment this so we can see that there's no more text shaking. So for our sample one, the monospace tag is going to be around the entire text while our sample text two is just going to be the number. So let me code that up real quick. All right, so here's our little script here. And let me briefly explain what's going on here. So I have string interpolation for both of these and it just says monospace and then our number. And this n0 here is the equivalent of two string with the n0 string parameter. And this basically tells us that this is going to be a decimal number with zero decimals. And once it's greater than a thousand, we're going to add commas. And so for simple one, we have our entire string and we apply the monospace extension method. While for the second one, we just apply it to our number. And at the bottom, we increment this number by 250 per second. So that's what this time dot delta time is. So this is going to be adding to number 250 per second. So let's save and apply our text to our script and hit the play button. So it looks very clean. There's no shaking whatsoever. And clearly the one on the bottom looks much better because of the, <laughs> the label looking kind of funky with monospace. So this is good for numbers. I highly recommend using it regardless of how big this number is. There is no text shaking whatsoever. So for sample one, let's turn off the monospace and leave the second one enabled. So you can kind of see the difference. All right, so you can see that this top one shakes just a little bit. All right, so here's the font from Crypto Clickers. And as you can see, this is a major yikes. You can see how badly that is shaking. So you can see there's no shaking whatsoever in the monospace. It's kind of starting to irritate me, so I'm just going to stop playing. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you've learned something new. By the end of this video, you should be good with extension methods, static methods, and text mesh pro. If you enjoyed the video and you indeed learned something new, please smash that like button as it really helps out the video. And the daily question for today is, what is your favorite Gatorade flavor? Comment that down below. And I'd say mine is either lemon lime or Oof. I mean, I do have lemon lime the most, but I'd have to think about that one. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel, check the Patreon. It's in the description below. Join the Discord server. And there's a thanks button. So if you want to support the channel, hit that button as well. 
I hope everyone has a wonderful day or night, wherever you're at, and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Peace. Thank you.